evening. First tonight, serious embarrassment for the Prime Minister. A Liberal candidate he publicly endorsed less than two weeks ago has been forced to quit over links with a convicted drug trafficker. Two weeks ago, Prime Minister John Howard launched his tough on drugs policy and on the same day put his full weight behind the Liberal candidate for Stirling, businessman Paul Afkos. He has been in every sense a wonderful citizen of this country and I'm very proud to have him as the Liberal Party candidate here in Stirling. It's now known Mr Afkos is linked with a convicted drug trafficker. A $5 million haul of amphetamines was allegedly found in a ute owned by the Liberal candidate. It's claimed the vehicle was being driven by his drug dealer friend when the drugs were found. And now the Director of Public Prosecutions has ordered Mr Avcos to pay $300,000 lent to him by that friend. The Crown seizing assets pending the outcome of serious drug charges. One of those assets is the right to receive regular repayments pursuant to a loan agreement from Mr Avcos. While Mr Avcos himself faces no criminal allegation, late today he bowed to the pressure and resigned as Liberal Party candidate. It is not my wish to put my family, the Liberal Party and the government through any bad publicity. Catherine Philp, 10 News. Thousands of firefighters may be breathing easier tonight, but they're still on high alert. Although temperatures soared to 47 degrees in some areas, the infernos they'd feared across South Australia, Victoria and southern New South Wales didn't occur. Thousands of firefighters have been standing by for more than 24 hours, backed up by the sky crane Isabella. While the mercury climbed well into the 40s and strong winds fanned the state, they only had to contend with a few minor grass fires. Now they have their fingers crossed in case tonight's cooler change brings storms and lightning that could have them racing into the night. And right across southeastern Australia, people have sweltered through today's scorching temperatures. Beaches, the best place to seek relief. For those prepared to expose themselves to the blistering heat in South Australia, the cool waters off Glenelg brought some relief as the mercury soared to 44 degrees at 3 o'clock. The slip slop slap message at least being followed by some. It was the latest in a string of hot days for Adelaide and coming after a night when sleep didn't come easily, the temperature falling to just 29. But Melbourne gave Adelaide a run for its money in the hot stakes, just falling short of the forecast top of 41 degrees with 40.1. This coming after Melbourne experienced its coolest January in 12 years. A great excuse to pull out the bathers and head to the local pool. In February we're seeing some extreme temperatures north of Victoria and these are now starting to spill into the, across the Victoria. The heat on the minds of caring keepers at the Melbourne Zoo, particularly for animals from cooler regions. Animals like that are not built to adapt to these, to these very hot days and so we do need to help them just to cool their body temperatures down. The swelter in Sydney wasn't as intense but temperatures in the high 20s were enough to encourage many to Bondi. The story different inland however with 40 plus in some areas. Nicole Strawn, 10 News. In far north Queensland they're facing a 60 million dollar damage bill from floods. The Cape York and Gulf of Carpentaria region has been flooded by the wet season and tropical cyclone Fritz. Towns from Burketown right down to the Diamantina River have been cut off and are relying on special food drops for supplies. It's been early January uh, since uh, the, the roads were open, so they've been cut off. Cyclone Fritz is still moving west across the Northern Territory, but is showing no signs of re-intensifying. A nationwide manhunt is finally over. Police arresting a man in Queensland for a brutal armed hold-up at a Perth news agency. After almost two weeks on the run, Leon David Sutcliffe was finally tracked down at a property in Yandina, 100 kilometres out of Brisbane. Police arresting the 29-year-old in relation to a violent armed robbery at a Kundula news agency. It was our intention to extradite Sutcliffe from Queensland. Security footage of the robbery shows a gunman entering the news agency, threatening staff and demanding money. News agent Ron Giannoncelli charged down the gunman, taking two bullets in the process of saving the lives of his wife and sister. He was later rushed to hospital and survived the attack. Sutcliffe's 30-year-old partner, Amy Dean Johns, was arrested earlier this week and later charged with driving the getaway car.
WA detectives will fly to Queensland on Monday to extradite Leon Sutcliffe. It's expected he'll then be charged with the armed robbery and could face further charges in relation to the shooting. Brad Hodson, 10 News. And still ahead in 10's late news, America easing its stand over prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. And the world celebrating Valentine's Day. You're watching 10's late news. America appears to be caving in to international pressure over its indefinite detention of terror suspects in Cuba. It's announced annual reviews that could see captives set free. It may be known as Camp X-Ray, but the American military prison in Cuba is far from transparent, holding more than 660 suspected terrorists from 44 nations. It's fast becoming an international headache for the US. But Defence Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is making no excuses. They're enemy combatants and terrorists who are being detained for acts of war against our country. And that is why different rules have to apply. With prisoners held without charge or trial, those rules appear to be softening. America now making a major concession, announcing an annual review process where detainees will be able to present information on their own behalf. Those no longer deemed a threat will be released. But for Australian captives, Mamdu Habib and David Hicks, it's too little too late. This is something they should have done in the first place when they were taken to Guantanamo Bay. My client wouldn't be equipped with the necessary skills to deal with this. They need lawyers. But while one terrorist issue is slowly being sorted out, another is just surfacing, with reports French authorities have warned of a likely attack on Australian soil this year. The report also claims Australia is considered a weak link in the global anti-terrorism chain. Alan Ruskell, 10 News. This week, Australia and America finally signed off on an historic free trade agreement. But what does it all mean? Trade Minister Mark Vale will answer that and questions about what benefits, if any, it will have for Australian interests when he meets the press here on Network 10 at 8.30 in the morning. Thousands of people had to be evacuated after a spectacular gas fire in America. A Philadelphia water crew accidentally drilled into a gas pipeline. The gas exploded as it spewed from the pipe and more than 100 firefighters gave up trying to extinguish the blaze, choosing instead to protect nearby homes and businesses. Flames exploded 50 metres into the air, destroying at least a dozen nearby cars and trucks. It's continuing to blow from the west to the east. Otherwise, uh, it would be blowing over toward uh, the schools or uh, that 17-storey apartment building there. The fire has knocked out power to more than 4,000 homes and authorities fear it could take 24 hours to, to stop the gas supply. The judge in Michael Jackson's child molestation case has called for the trial to be held before the end of the year. While only a handful of fans turned up for the star's second pre-trial hearing, Jackson was not present, his defence team telling the judge they should be ready by December. The main witness in this case, the accuser, is a young man with cancer. And there is no guarantee he's going to be available as a witness indefinitely. The judge agreed to consider revising the gag order so Jackson could publicly refute the allegations. Now a quick look at the weather with the satellite showing heavy clouds swirling around a low in northern Australia as more cloud forms over inland WA stretching over the bite towards Tasmania. On the synoptic chart, a cold front should bring some relief to South Australia, Victoria and southern New South Wales, while a low in the northwest maintains heavy cloud across the north. So today should see more showers for Cairns, mainly sunny around Townsville. Late showers for Brisbane, possible thunderstorms in Sydney and Canberra. Showers likely for Melbourne, sunny in Hobart, Adelaide and Perth, late thunder for Alice Springs and possible thunderstorms in the top end. And just in case you needed it, proof you're never too old for love. Couples of all ages choose the most romantic day of the year to say, I love you. These couples are no strangers to love. Some have been married for over 50 years, but today they're newlyweds again, choosing the most romantic day of the year to renew their vows. I now pronounce you man and wife. You if you can kiss Irene. <laughs> So what's their secret to long-lasting love? They're very good friends as well as lovers. We're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trust, respect. Friendship. We're never ever away from one another, so we sort of do everything together. To my bath buddy, 
I look forward to the next time we make bubbles together. For some people, a message in the paper is easier than saying it face to face. But the 14th of February isn't a happy day for everyone. Singles like Matt taking the Speed Date Express to get their love lives back on track. My ideal Valentine, um, somebody was into me, somebody with a brain, somebody with a body. Each person has until the next stop to find out if they're compatible. Hi. Hi. I'm Matt. I'm Matt Karen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Matt didn't meet his soulmate today, but says he's still optimistic. Love was blossoming in other parts of the world. The Philippines entering the Guinness Book of Records with a mass smooching session. And in Spain, the ultimate sweet gift for your sweetheart, the world's largest chocolate heart. Heidi Cooch, 10 News. Looks good. And that's the latest from the 10 Newsroom. Thanks for joining us. I'll have our next national bulletin at 5 o'clock this evening. But now it's time for Sports Tonight with Matthew White. I'm Tracy Spicer. Good night.